Hello, welcome back. I'm Jason, and today I'd like to talk about why magnets attract and repel each other. Magnetic fields store energy, right? Uh, they store energy. You can extract some of that energy in some of our modern devices like generators and things like that. But they extract, they, they contain potential energy. Electric fields also store potential energy. Here is a bar magnet, right? Here is another bar magnet. All bar magnets have some north and south pole. I'm going to draw this one north-south. I'm going to draw this one north-south. Now, how are these things going to behave? Same, uh, same poles are going to repel each other. We know that to be the case. Let's draw the magnetic field, not the whole field. We'll just draw kind of a little portion of it. It comes out of the north, goes into the south. So this way, this way, this way. It goes out of the north, into the south, right? This one is going to go this way, and it's going to connect again to its south pole, out of the north, like this, and in to the south, right? Now what's going to happen as we push these things closer together? Notice that the direction of these arrows are kind of pointed uh, at, at odds with each other, but the closer I get them, what's going to happen is they're going to be sort of additive. Yes, you can think of it as a vector. You can think of it, some of it pointed this way and some of it pointed up. So you are going to have a cancellation in the portions that are pointed at each other, but you are going to have a portion pointed up. And as you get them closer together, that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So they're going to be additive inside. They're in general pointed in the same direction. So you're going to have strong uh, field inside of here as you push them together. Because you can see they're sort of pointed, not exactly in the same direction, but as they get closer together, they're gonna to be more and more, if you can think about uh, the ones coming this way, they're gonna be aligned up more and more, and it's gonna get very, very strong magnetic field in the center. So the magnetic field, you square it, and then you divide by two numbers. This is a number, and this is a number. So basically, the energy density is just related to the magnetic field strength squared. The higher the magnetic field, the more energy it stores. Right? We can build electronic devices, coils of wire that store lots of energy and magnetic fields that can be released in other situations, right? in circuits, for instance. The best way to think about stored energy is a rubber band. If I pull a rubber band, I'm storing energy in that rubber band. How is it stored? In the electric attraction between the atoms, which are now being stretched apart. It's wanting to pull them back together. So there's energy stored in the electric field between atoms and electrons, and there's energy stored in the magnetic field that exists in space. And that how where the magnetic field is strongest, then the energy is going to be higher. But the stronger the magnetic field, the more energy is stored. So you have to think about how does the, the universe operate. The universe operates by going from high energy to low energy. This marker has potential energy from the gravitational field of Earth. Here it is at a high potential energy. When I let it go, it's going to move down to a lower potential energy because it's closer to the ground. Everything in general wants to travel towards lower energy. If you start asking me questions like, well, why does everything try to go to lower energy? I am sorry, I can't help you. But that is how our universe works. The rules that are in place are that things tend to wind down towards lower energy. When you drop things, they go from high energy to low energy. When you have temperature, a, a, a very hot cup of water, it tends to cool off because it's going from high energy, high movement of the atoms to low energy, low movement of the atoms. When you stretch a rubber band, that's high energy. You let it go, it goes to low energy state. And if you try to push these magnets together, it's going to be trying to make a stronger and stronger magnetic field in the center, which is going to raise the energy of the magnetic of the of the energy stored there. And the universe never wants to go to a higher energy state that goes against the laws of nature. So when you put two magnets together, because the magnetic field is trying to get stronger in the middle, storing more energy, it's going to resist that. In other words, I have to put work in to store the energy there. Let me say that again. I have to put work in from my chemical reactions and my muscles. I have to do work on the magnets to store the energy that is now higher between the magnets. Because when I put them together and force them together and hold them there, then I've now stored energy in the field. Where did the energy come from? It came from my muscles. Where did that energy come from? It came from the food I ate. Where did that energy come from? The chemical bonds of the food I had. So the energy came from somewhere, the food, and into the magnetic field. When I let it go, they tend to push apart because the energy is then released and uh, everything, the universe tries to move towards lower energy states. Just like the marker goes from high to low, the child on the slide goes from high to low, the rubber band goes from high to low, the cup of coffee goes from hot to cold. 
high energy to low energy. That's why they repel, because as you push them together, you're trying to make the field stronger there, which means more energy there. It's like trying to go uphill on a slide. You're going to have to fight and do energy and, and work on yourself to climb a flight of stairs. You, that's, that's just the way the, the universe works. Now, let us talk about the opposite situation. Let's talk about the situation where now I have two bar magnets. And instead of this, I put this uh, as the North Pole here, and I put this as the South Pole here. You already know what's going to happen. Opposites attract, so they're going to come together. Let's see if we can understand it. The magnetic field exits and enters here, exits and enters here. It comes out here and enters here. It comes out here and it enters here. It goes out of the North Pole, always into the South Pole. So out of the North Pole, always into the South Pole. And then it goes out of the North Pole here, out of the North Pole here, and this direction, and into the South Pole here, into the South Pole here. Now I'm going to erase this one because I think this is this makes it confusing. But you can see the arrow. Uh, actually, let me erase this one as well. I think it's going to be a little clearer if I put, yeah, like this, like that. So like this. Notice the direction of the arrows. When I bring these things closer together, notice that this one is going up, but this one at the same location is going down. They're fighting each other. And as I bring them closer and closer together, I messed up my drawing. I'm sorry about that. As I bring them closer and closer together, what is going to happen? This magnetic field is going to tend to cancel with that one and make the magnetic field strength lower. This one is going to be going opposite direction of this one, and it's going to tend to make the magnetic field strength lower in the center here. So as I bring these guys together, I'm going to write down weaker. As I bring them closer together, the field gets weaker in strength. But weaker in strength means weaker in energy storage. And remember, the universe likes to go towards lower and lower energy storage. So two magnets attracting can be explained. Because when we bring those two poles of the magnet together, we are canceling the magnetic field, making the magnetic field lower between them, which is a lower energy state, lower energy. It's like releasing energy from the rubber band. The same way the rubber band comes together, the magnets come together, because as soon as that energy starts to get lowered, it is just going to fly together to make the energy lower. Forces in nature generally always push things in the direction of lower energy. Gravity pushes you down the slide to lower energy. The electric forces pull us to lower energy from the rubber band, and the magnets pull each other together or push each other together into a lower energy state together where the field is weaker. You feel a repulsive force because as we try to do this, the field is stronger and we're raising the energy here, and so it wants to resist that. The universe likes to go from high energy to low energy. When you push two magnets together with the same pole, either both north or both south, the same exact thing will happen if you take this, if you can imagine the south pole over here, they're both going to be pointed in the same direction, and the two south poles are going to make a strong field, and it resists that. But if you flip it around, they're going to attract to make the field and the energy stored lower. Now, if you ask another question, well, why, why does the, the energy of the universe like to get lower? Well, I don't know, and nobody knows, all right? Or you might say, Back to the electron spinning. You might say, okay, that's a neat theory about the electron spinning and how it explains magnetism, but why do electrons spin? I don't know. Okay? And also, is it a ball? No, we know it's not a ball. Quantum mechanics is a wave theory. We know electrons are waves, but they have some kind of angular momentum, and nobody has a really good picture to describe how a wavy thing has an angular momentum, which we usually associate with spinning objects in the macroscopic level. Ultimately, one of my favorite people that I've ever studied is a famous scientist named Richard Feynman. Probably knew more about quantum mechanics than most people will ever learn, right? Way more than me. And it, somebody asked him, hey, explain to me why magnets work. And he thought about it and he gave about a 20 minute answer and ultimately concluded, I can't explain it to you because once you continue asking questions, you get down to the point beyond which anyone has any answers to anything. So all we do in science is we have models of nature, right? Do magnetic field lines exist? Not sure. They're a great calculational tool to calculate how things will behave, though. Well, do electrons really spin? Mm, not sure. Probably not. But it's a great calculational tool. It's a good model of how the universe works. Maybe everything is string theory. Maybe everything is waving strings. Maybe angular momentum is something totally different than I can conceive of. But that doesn't make the theories and the ideas worthless. We come up with better and better models to describe the world. 
This is how I chose to describe how magnetism is, it attracts and repels objects to you. When you bring a magnet next to the paperclip, it aligns the magnetic domains as we drew in the paperclip. And then now we've explained how magnets can attract and repel. And then of course they attract each other. So you're inducing a magnet to form and then they attract each other. And then of course we uh, talked about this. If that doesn't satisfy you, well, join the club. It doesn't totally satisfy me either, but I think it's the best humanity can do with just making better and better models to describe our world. So please drop me a line, let me know what you think. And if you made it to the end, thank you very much. Drop me your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.